In this devlog, I'll be adding a bunch of enemies and making some essential changes to the player. Also, if you're new, I'm making a Metroidvania inspired by your ideas. So sip on your tea, sit back and relax, and let's go. At the beginning of the game, we need to keep enemies simple. We haven't yet introduced the player to any advanced mechanics, or even basic ones, so we need to make sure that the transition is seamless. That's where the fox comes in. This enemy just moves left and right. It'll patrol and if you touch it, it deals damage. Similar to the Crawlid in Hollow Knight. I really like the idea of implementing different forest critters into the environment, as it really fits the theme. Things like owls, foxes, rats, who knows, I might even have a stag down the line. I very much stuck to my favourite game design philosophy with this one, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. And you can't really get much simpler than a fox that moves left and right. On the topic of keeping things simple, I had a few people asking me what the website I used for my plan of engagement was. It's Milanote. I honestly cannot recommend it enough for organisation, it's basically just a better version of Trello. But I keep everything here, from scripts for my devlog, and I also make my state machines here for the different enemies. I've also added some new functionality to the ghouls. They will get overhauled a little bit more again, but I have added a charge and a melee attack. Essentially, when you get in a specific range, they'll start running at you. You may have seen this in some of my shots, and some of the issues I had making it. And the melee attack as well, you can really feel the weight behind the movement. Pen USB Mike did such an amazing job with creating these. I genuinely cannot wait to get the sound manager in so I can really bring these creatures to life. It's one thing to have the animations in place, it's another to have the particle effects, the ambience, the sounds, and I genuinely cannot wait. I did also want an easy way for players to understand when they were about to be attacked, as the different states were flowing into each other a bit too quickly. So at the beginning of the attack animation, I added a few wind-up frames. I recycled them from the idle state, but it works for now. But essentially, the eyes will start glowing, and then at the brightest point, that's when they will actually attack. It just makes it a little bit more personal. You have to look these suckers in the eyes as you kill them. Before I move on, I do just want to do a very quick shout out to my patrons. It really does help me get one step close to making this my full time job. And I cannot thank you enough for that. And if you want to join these absolute legends, there will be a link to my Patreon in the description below. Now the next enemy was actually chosen by you. I created a poll on my YouTube community and you unanimously chose the summoner. I'm not gonna lie, this is the one I at least wanted to do. Not because it wasn't interesting, but because I knew it'd probably be the hardest one for me to create. But the community has spoken and I'll do as you say. And in the end, it didn't end up being as bad as I thought. It was actually a lot of fun. The first thing I did was pop into middle note and just jot down everything I thought I would need to make. This included things like importing the sprites, creating an animation controller, writing out a state machine within Milanote and then implementing that later on down the line into Unity, and figuring out how we'd actually implement the summon state. Now, I'm still not 100% settled on how it actually works, however, I do have the basic functionality in place. And that's good enough now until I get a bit of feedback from you guys as to how you would actually want it to work. At the moment, the summoner will just patrol left and right just like any other enemy that we've created so far. When the player is in range, and as long as their attack is off cooldown, they'll summon a fox! And again, there are a few different things that we could implement here. I just simply use the fox because it's so gosh darn cute and I want us to see more of them in my levels. But I also haven't implemented anything else that would be more fitting. There are two main avenues I'm thinking of going down with this one. They could summon some sort of airborne unit, such as a, a raven for example, that just flies towards the enemy. Or the spicier choice, it could fly around and resurrect a handful of mobs you've already killed within a scene. This inherently could make it more of a boss fight or a mini boss fight rather than a general enemy. And in case any of you are wondering, this won't be one of the first enemies you come across in the demo, as I can imagine this enemy becoming a bit of a pain to deal with if made right. But I definitely want to know your opinions on this. What functions do you think would be really interesting for this mob? I have also made some very subtle changes to the player movement as well. 
After playing around with it for a couple of weeks, and getting some of my friends and family to play it too, one of the biggest pieces of feedback I got was that the play was just a bit too floaty. I definitely agree, and I found the root of the problem to be within the in-air state. Basically, whenever the player jumped, or fell, or walked off a balcony, their X velocity was locked in place. There was no way for them to suddenly stop. It gave a bit less control to the player, which is not what I want at all. It just makes the whole player system feel so much more responsive. I also just dialed back a few of the numbers, just with a bit of playtesting, a tweak here and there. So you can't jump as high, you can still make it to all the different ledges and such, and with the ledge climb function, it's still completely fine. And I really cranked up the variable jump height. Now if you tap the button, you're, you don't go very high at all, but you can hold it to get a lot more momentum. It just feels a lot more in control, which is perfect. This does take me nicely onto a few of the updates I've made with the overarching combat system. I don't have any set animations just yet, so this one is more of a placeholder for now. But I have implemented iframes, or invulnerability frames. Essentially, whenever you get hit or take damage, you'll have around a second to get yourself out of dodge before, you know, you take damage again. A function like this is absolutely essential for fast-paced games such as this one, and it's nice to have a visual cue to indicate that you've taken damage. For reference, Hollow Knight has a whole hit-stop animation. Time freezes around you, and you shatter across the screen. It's hard to miss a cue like that. It's things like this that really make games stand out above the rest. They're easy to follow, easy to understand, and the player doesn't need to think about it. They just know. I do still need to add a lot of visual fidelity to it to make it look a bit more impactful other than you becoming as pale as Casper. Next on the agenda for me is making the particle and sound systems. I cannot wait to get my teeth sunk into the Unity particle system as I know how powerful it can be. And sound really can make or break a game. And as well as that, this little area around me now is starting to feel a bit claustrophobic. I definitely need to start working on some more level design. It's been one of the things I've been most excited about jumping into, as level and environmental design is probably one of my favourite aspects of game development. The only issue is I kind of needed a few enemies and a few different other systems in place first before I could really do anything. Now that I've got the core systems in place, I'm going to need your help. There are going to be most likely hundreds of different enemy types in this, and it's a great opportunity to get your ideas into the game. I'm going to be hosting some different events over on the Discord server, alongside different art and design challenges, where we as a community can come together and design the different monsters that will be implemented in the game. I absolutely love reading through all your suggestions, and you all genuinely inspire me every day, so thank you so much.